visibility. In around 130 to 140 foot range, it was just feeling. Uh, we found the purse roughly around 128 feet. Yesterday, a forearm. Three days ago, hair and skin fragments. Prosecutors say it's all enough to call off the search and try Virgili for Bauer's murder. Yet it will still be hard. The purse helps the state. It doesn't help the family. And while the Orlowskis really don't know Bauer's family, they say it's nice to have closure tonight. And this family agrees and gives them a plaque. We just wait to thank them for everything they've done for us. At least we have that much of it. Put our mind at ease a little bit. Now, since May of 1995, the EPA has been after the Carlo family and the Mon Valley Steel Company in bankruptcy court to try and get them to pay for the closure of that shaft. They tell me that that process has been slow up until now, and now the EPA is looking for some kind of bond to pay for the closure of those shafts. Reporting live, Darius Chisholm, Channel 11 News. Body parts, but no idea. As they've called off the search for the body of Jolene Bowers, Officials say they did identify the body part found yesterday as that of Bowers, and now they have found her purse. The district attorney now says he has enough evidence to prosecute. Police say her ex-boyfriend, Franklin Virgili, shoved her down the shaft during an argument. He remains behind bars charged with her murder. And an update on a story with hand of a young woman from an abandoned mine in Greene County. Well, today, the search for more remains at the old Clyde Mine in Morgan Township was called off but not before a final discovery was made. Now, Mary Rob Jackson was there as divers entered the 700-foot deep shaft for the last time. Mary Rob? Stacy, the divers have been looking for more remains of 20-year-old Jolene Bowers. The young woman from Morgan Township was allegedly pushed into the mine shaft by her former boyfriend during an argument. 26-year-old Franklin Virgili Jr. is in the Greene County Jail charged with homicide. This morning, those of us standing on the surface had a hard time imagining the courage it takes to dive into more than 200 feet of murky, rubble-filled water with almost no visibility. But John and Shelley Orlowski, a husband and wife deep-sea diving team from Florida, somehow managed to find Jolene Bauer's purse containing ID, driver's license, and owner's card. We found the purse roughly around 128 feet, about 134 feet. I thought we found something, but by the time I got it into my face mask, I found out it was a deer head. Now, the Orlowskis hope to be able to find more for Jolene Bauer's family, but because of so much debris, jagged metal, and a lack of visibility, they decided that this morning would be their last dive. The remains found yesterday will be sent to a DNA testing laboratory in Baltimore, Maryland, to confirm the identity. Stacy, Mary, Mary Rob, it does sound like it's very tough for these divers to try to recover the body. Do they have any other options at all? You know, Stacy, they really don't, uh, barring a miracle, as the coroner said, uh, really the only thing they might be able to do is to hire a commercial diving team, but they guesstimate that doing that would cost some $100,000. So far, the airfare and accommodations for the uh, Orlowskis from Florida were donated by people in the community as well as all the volunteer effort that has gone into that mine site for more than a week. So it seems to be cost prohibitive. It does seem that way.